Okay, I want to drain the coolant out and replace it with clean uh, coolant. I think it's okay, but I've, I've never done this myself before, so I want to work out how to do it. And interestingly, there's no videos on the internet showing you how to do it. Um, and there aren't any clear instructions there were. In the handbook, the manual, it says to drain it from the little tap down here. There is a tiny bolt on the underside of the radi radiator there, which I think is the drain plug, but I think it's a bit rounded off. And also I've read that it's not really the best way to do it because you might strip that plug out. Um, but I think what I'm going to have to do is take these pipes off and drain it that way. I've closed the heater tap because I don't really want it all pouring out of the heater. Um, I don't know if that's the right way to do it. But anyway, I'll try undoing this uh, Jubilee clip first and I hope too much water won't come out. Yes, it's quite tough getting this hose off. I hope I can get it back on again. Yeah, I do get it off and then quite a bit of coolant has drained out already there. Um, pretty much everywhere, which isn't ideal. This is not really what I wanted, but I guess that's what happens. Um, that's why I really wanted to use the drain plug. Maybe I should have done the other one first um, to lower the level, you know. Okay, it's not all gone on with the floor, but quite a bit of it has. So just undoing that jubilee clip, it's coming off nicely on this bottom hose. And I guess this is where the water will really gush out now, once I get this pipe off. Yeah, it all came out in a gush. But and um, actually quite a lot of it I managed to catch in my washing up bowl down there. It really came out in a big gush though. I wish I'd caught that on camera, but yeah, be prepared. It's all gonna come out in a gush. You can see there's quite a bit still in the bottom of the reservoir. So this is where a bit of flushing out comes in and maybe I might as well now just take the whole reservoir out and have a look at it and then it will help me to mop up the mess. Uh, I don't quite know what you're meant to do with coolant. If let, anyone does know, let me know because the local tips don't take it. Some people say, yeah, it's okay to flush it down the loo. Other people say, do not do that. So I don't know what else to do, what, what to do with it because local recycling centres won't, won't take antifreeze. These are the four bolts and washers I took out of the side of the radiator. I thought the radiator might sort of fall, drop down. I was a bit worried about that, but it seems to be on a, a sort of bracket mounting there. So it should be quite easy to pull out. Hey, I can confirm the radiator does come out quite easily. Um, and it's quite light. So that's good. Yeah, there is quite a bit of nasty looking crud in there. Definitely worth flush out, I think. So I'll go over to the drain and get the hose pipe and do that. I'm wondering what happens now if I actually open the heater valve, will I get more stuff pouring back out? So I'm gonna open that. Yes, we get a little bit more coming out, which is all the stuff coming out of the heater matrix, isn't it? But it's not that much. I think I'll leave that open. You can see the bolt, which wouldn't come off. Yeah, and it won't come off because it's round, completely round. I've got it on a dental jet wash mode. It is back in uh, getting these bolts in was a bit tricky 
uh, but I got there in the end. The uh, hoses are both on and tight. I've had a bit of a mop up down there. It's not the ideal way to do it. I think I would like to have a radiator that had a drain tap, but mine doesn't. But I've learned how to take the radiator out and I've given it a clean up and that's good. Yeah, so I'm going to put some stuff in it now. I live in a super, I live in a super hard water area so i got some of that because i dread to think what regular tap water around here would do to the engine um considering what it does to a kettle and i'll, I'll pop in what antifreeze i i do have and uh pop out and get some more later and top it up no it filled up i rather overfilled it um and I'm hoping that when I start it up and starts pumping around and fills up the heater, that um, it will go down and I'll put some more antifreeze in because I didn't really put enough in. So I'll go out for a little drive, make sure nothing's leaking. It's dried out fairly well in there. I don't like having all the water in the engine bay going over all the electrics and things, but I've let it dry out and I hope that job has been a success, but we'll see. Oh yeah, it's dropped right down already, so that's great. I think that will go down even further. It's very clean in there. exciting so just after I checked the heater and it was hot I was going up the hill and there was a massive bang from the engine um, and I thought oh no I've blown up the engine um, but I stopped the car straight away and ran back on the road and I found this spring and this bit of metal and I looked in the engine bay and the filler cap had blown off and it can't have been because I put too much water in because the water level was too low. I was popping out to get some more antifreeze to top it up some more. It was a few inches before the, below the top. But I guess these are just, these are serviceable items. And it was getting quite hot. Um, and it just blew. Some sort of soldered fit in there. And it's under pressure. And it blew off. So I guess I'll shove a rag in the top of it and I'll put one on order and I'll, I'll have a nice shiny new one. So kind of that's the end really, that's the way I did it. It's sort of successful, except I don't have a filler cap now because it blew off um, and uh, everything seems to be working and not leaking, so that's good. Okay, right, thanks.